So let's take a few minutes to explore how these ground rules land on, on each of us. Have any of us had experiences that might give some context to these ground rules or have additional thoughts? Yeah, so I mean, I, I recently, uh, a few months ago, had an experience where we were having, we were actually the module was on microaggression. So it was a difficult topic to be discussing. There were very um, diverse identities in the room. And, um, you know, you would think that in a situation where everyone has had, you know, uh, that someone has enacted microaggressions on them, that there would be some, a, a little bit more openness towards the experiences of others. Mm -hmm. And um, something about gender came up and the way that one person in particular was just dealing with the topic and um, it felt very triggering to me. And at the time, because I didn't really know how to interact or engage with that. And, you know, I was sort of, I just kept like feeling myself sink into myself mm -hmm. deeper and deeper. And then it just, you know, I didn't get to engage in the conversation mm -hmm. after that. And I think having ground rules that people are aware of and just recognizing that you never know what can come up for different people mm -hmm. uh, can, mm -hmm. is, is, is just important. And it creates a sort of a safe space where people feel comfortable speaking, but also mm -hmm. a brave space where people feel like they can talk about what's going on in their minds and like they want to learn and engage and improve, but you know, from a place that is safe for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like the idea of brave spaces in addition to safe spaces because it does sort of ask you to challenge yourself. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I think this is, we're hope, hopefully building a space where people feel like they can bring the, their whole selves mm -hmm. to the conversation and have, you know, respect and interest from the other people who are participating. And I guess it's important as well to reflect on how this person that was kind of like not being nice to your identities or your cultural differences maybe didn't have the intention of right. do, doing that, right. but might have not reflected himself or herself on how that might land on you, how might that impact right. others in general. I should say, I think that's so hard, that, that rule about kind of separating the, the person from the message. Mm. Because there's times it's really hard to not feel aggressed by the person. Right. But to kind of say, look, at least if you've kind of established this, they are probably doing their best and to try to at least believe that they're doing their best and, and think about the behavior, which might need to be corrected or, or lifted up, but not attacking the person, which can be hard. Well, and there's that tension, right? Because it can get so depersonalized, right? Or, you know, we just s start getting behind our defenses and our walls mm -hmm. because we've experienced these aggressions throughout our lives and we feel like we're not able to show up in these different spaces, right? And then that thing gets triggered and so walls start coming up because mm -hmm. then, you know, you don't know how to engage and then that other person might, whether the intention was or wasn't to be provocative, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. then, then, like, there's how do you manage that? And I feel especially within uh, the context of an online course where there isn't a person in front of you, where there isn't necessarily yeah. a mediator or someone to, to create that dialogue, right? There's just a computer screen and mm -hmm. video or text or someone's responses. It can just become so easy to like separate um, and, and just, you know, be, be sort of even more or feel like that, that tension is just rising, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, de-escalation. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult and, and tricky thing, but I think when it's managed well, and, and I think it can, you know, I think it brings out the best in people and you can actually foster connection rather than, you know, disconnection mm -hmm. and harm and, and trigger. And obviously I say that from a place of privilege too, right? Because there are some microaggressions and, and just outward aggressions that I've never experienced uh, in my life. So, yeah, yeah. But on Juan Pablo's point, I think it's also very interesting that this online experience might also give you pause to actually pause the video yeah. and also reflect on how the other person that you feel that is being harmful to, to you, mm -hmm. where does, where is it coming from? So that when you encounter it again, or if you encounter it again, then you can deal better with the situation. Mm -hmm. We need to educate in general. So to be open about their good intent, although mm -hmm. it landed mm -hmm. bad on us, for example. And part of like the the work of assuming the best intent is on the people who are speaking to like actually yes, come at the come situation the with exactly. the best intent, right? Yeah, Not yeah. to hide behind everybody else's expectation mm -hmm. that you're saying things truthfully, but to actually like be thoughtful and use your your best judgment and your best intentions and your mind, you know, actually come at it in an honest way instead of 
you know, using kind of civility to mask things that might be right. ugly or microaggressions or, or something else that you're saying. And it seems to me that another piece is that you come at it with your best intention and all of us will at times make mistakes. Right. We'll say things that right. we didn't realize and that's part of what, that's how we're learning, right? And so, yes, we want people to be respectful and engage us in that, but you also not get defensive. You know, just, I'm sorry, thank you for Right, that for up. correcting and, me, yeah. And for me, you know, if I can get past my defensive part and just kind of say, actually, that took some courage for them to say that. And mm -hmm. what I want to do is be grateful for that rather than try to prove that, that you're you know, right, what, yeah. That I was right yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think we should reflect on that based on we can sometimes harm people that we love as well, like mm -hmm. our, f our own family, yeah. by not thinking about these things. But as well, we have to think that they might have not wanted to do that. So right. giving the benefit of the doubt to mm -hmm. the person right. that is. Yeah, uh, is doing this. Is, I think it's important. And at the same time, we also don't want the emotional burden to fall on the marginalized folk to be the ones always. to always be educating yeah. and to be able right. to right. I think we also need to to create that. That's that's where the safety and the safe space comes in, mm -hmm. right? And that ability to feel comfortable showing up and not feel like you're always going to have to be either triggered or you know educating someone about your own experience and right. be like that token person for whatever identity it is that's being all, discussed all the at the time, yeah. right? Um, so yeah. yeah. And one of the nice things about an online class context is that I, I'm I'm guessing that this will reach a much broader group of people than would necessarily be sitting next to me in my you know conversation in Boston. Um, and so so I think this is a really cool opportunity to hear from a mm -hmm. much more diverse and kind of broad audience. And so in that sense, there are probably going to be experiences that like I'm not familiar with. I wouldn't know what might come out incorrectly or offensively or be an aggression or a microaggression. And so it's a, it's a good space to really approach it with a learning perspective rather than mm -hmm. a, like, I have yeah. a lot to say, but it's a good experience to like, listen and read and learn from all of the, the wealth right. of people who are around us. Right, it's that growth.